The 6.5 is on the road here at Lenovo Tech World in Las Vegas. We are coming off an incredible event in the sphere, headlined uh, by Lenovo CEO YY and pretty much a cadre of industry luminaries. Pat, that was a wonderful experience. Yeah. I just wanted to say that. Experience. I've been waiting to say that all morning long. <laughs> it was. It was really tremendous. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was just all of the who's who yeah. of this event. And Pat, by the way, this has really become like an AI infra event. I know the C Isn't of amazing? consumer, yeah, you know, but really, I'm kind of thinking maybe the C should be for chips. Okay, the C should be for because like this show has been all about like chips, enterprise AI infrastructure. I mean, yeah, in, you know, the, the stuff in our pocket and the stuff on our desks are certainly going to influence the. The work we're going to do with AI, but man, CES has become a, a bit of an enterprise show, hasn't it? No, it is for sure. And I just remember five years ago when you know infrastructure was this uh, flat, you know, single-digit growth business, and people were wondering, you know, what was going to happen with it. And then generative AI hit, and now we are with the Genic AI, and it started pretty much uh, a consumer in the cloud, but over the years is very quickly getting to an enterprise play. Uh, a conversation we knew was coming was, hey, is all AI going to be de delivered from the public cloud? And the reality is uh, the answer is no, right? We're going to have this you know, hybrid AI, right? We had hybrid cloud, and of course we have hybrid AI. Yeah, absolutely. Pat, I think we saw it in the first era. You know, there's there's a little tug of war of, yeah. for it, and there were certain clouds that were like, it's all going to the cloud. And by the way, there was pundits that said it was all going to the cloud. I think you were one of the smart pundits that said, oh, no, this thing's going to end up hybrid. Uh, and then, by the way, not just hybrid, it's going to yeah. end up multi. It's going to end up, you know, there's going to be a lot of different places in which infrastructure is going to exist. And I think, if anything, AI is just accelerating the fact that you're going to be a multi-hybrid AI environment because where's the model run? Hey, I mean, let's, why don't we bring in our no, guests? No, I just like talking to you. Okay. Uh, we like our guests. No, no, seriously, I want to bring in uh, Flynn Malloy. <laughs> Flynn. Congratulations morning, guys. on an incredible Thank you. Uh, uh, event uh, yeah. last night. It really was amazing. I urge everybody out there, if you haven't seen it, to go in and, and check that out. Hey, Pat, by the way, did you see we ended up on the big screen? Yeah, huh? I did. did. you know that? We were on the big, yeah. I didn't know that. As they were closing it out, there was uh, a video of Dan and I uh, that was put on doing the simulated smartphone doing the pregame. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that was cool. I didn't know that. But yes, we are basking mm -hmm. in the glow of that show this morning, um, it, you know, it was the biggest thing that Lenovo has ever done. It, you know, and it, it, we talked about it before. Coca-Cola has the the trophy launch. Um, you know, Adidas has the ball launch, and this was the technology launch for the FIFA sponsorship. And we use that and CES as a platform to showcase our partnerships. Right. As a platform to, to launch our new technology and to kick off what's going to be an amazing year for Lenovo. Over the next six months, you know, we're going to be all over FIFA. Um, for global football, uh, for the largest yeah. event that mankind has ever seen. Hang on, folks. As a, soccer guy, as a soccer guy myself, I, I was very excited. I will say, though, the Enterprise AI section that kicked off, awesome. Uh, at, on, in the but that video of the race cars, God, I, mean, oh, yeah. I had all the feels. Give me all the yeah. feels, you know, like. It, it, you know, we're a car guys, you know, for everyone out there on the Flynn. He's been a regular on the show. He likes driving muscle cars a little bit. And someday maybe we'll just do a whole show about that. But I don't know about you. When I hear those engines roaring. No, I that was see good. that going. I get like, uh, and I just. Well, we did those, we, they even took the Big Sky camera to, to Europe. And you saw the hungry yes. uh, F1 track. Um, there were also shots of uh, Beacon Hill, which is the F1 data center, which now is running liquid cooling, as, as announced yesterday. So, you know, the sphere, we're all in on shooting the most exciting yeah. places and the things that we do in Lenovo. And that was my favorite part of the show as yeah. well. And you probably had something to do with that. I don't know. Maybe. We, we might have had a little bit to do with it, but <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah, your baby's beautiful. <laughs> all right. So let's talk a little bit about hi hybrid AI. You know, we talked about in the in the pre preamble a little bit. And mm -hmm. You 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 heard us, and so well, Pat and I almost went on our own diatribe and just did the show by ourselves. We decided to bring you in here. No, I really want to hear from you on this. I like hybrid AI. Like, what is that? Like, what are people supposed to be picturing when yeah. you say hybrid AI mean? through the lens of Lenovo? Yeah. And why is that important that they have the right mental model for what that's going to look like? Because you know, it's still very early for them. Well, well, it, it is, and we talked about that uh, earlier in the in the in the pregame. We've talked about it for the last year together which is, you know, businesses, small, mid-sized businesses, you know, they've been doing a lot with AI. They've been getting a lot of subscriptions, running stuff in the cloud, trying to figure out, you know, I mean, there's some things 
with AI, once you can't unsee it. Like once you see what it can do, it's really amazing. And everybody's kind of stretching, how do my workflows, how should my functions go? How do I build this into my business to drive growth, to save cost? But the answers for how to do that um, are, are not immediate. Um, and a lot of it comes back to, as we say, what does hybrid mean? As we've said about hybrid cloud, where's the data? Where does the data want to stay? Where does it want to go? What about data gravity, sovereignty, you know, all of those issues? Follow the data. And the data, you know, almost all of your data, is, is being generated out at the edge. And when we say edge, that's not just you know, the far distant lands or you know, out on a ship in the ocean. The edge is the, the store, the retail store. It's the manufacturing site. It's the, the brand, you know, branch uh, bank. It's a hospital. You know, that's all edge. That's where the data is. That's where your customers are. That's where you know, AI wants to be delivered. So when you think about what is hybrid, for some companies, you know, there isn't an issue with latency. There isn't an issue with data gravity. You know, we can run it all, you know, costs aside, uh, but we can run it all out of the public cloud. Um, I think for the majority of customers, um, uh, you know, we've seen over 65% of, of our customers have all said, hey, um, we would like to have, you know, a hybrid answer, which means, you know, some should run, some can run in the public cloud. Others, you know, we want to bring the AI out closer to where the data is, where the customers are, where the business is, where that's happening. And that can be edge, it can be far edge, it can be in the data center. Uh, but the hybrid is what is the right mix of that for your business? How do you land? You know, what should go here, what should go here, what should go here. So could you elucidate that a little bit more? I mean, it's pretty clear on the edge when it comes to kind of your data, particularly where it's created, right? Healthcare, uh, retail, manufacturing, uh, transportation, the action is not inside uh, the massive monolithic data center. Um, but, but what is still happening? in the, let's say, the cloud data center or even the, um, I guess, the mothership, the on-prem data center? What's happening? What does that partition look like? Like, is it like easy as, hey, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna you know, train the big stuff in the big cloud, uh, we're gonna deploy it on the edge? Like, how does that, how does that look? Well, I, I don't think the industry has one answer. I don't think there will be just one answer. Um, but obviously, you know, training in the cloud, you know, inferencing out, you know, in the business at the edge uh, is the immediate obvious mm -hmm. answer. Um, but I, I think it gets back to, you know, what, what, what do customers, you know, what do businesses want out of AI? You know, and we, we talked about that before. Do businesses want to build AI? When I talk to, you know, a CIO, hey, what do you want to get out of I want to build AI. Mm -hmm. No, they want to use AI. They want to use it at speed, at scale, uh, around their company. And that, I think, is, you know, talks to what kind of AI um, they're going to, to put, what they're going to get out of the public clouds, what kind, what they're going to put in their own data centers, and what they're going to, you know, deliver at the edge. Think, for example, like a hospital, right, with the doctors and nurses mm -hmm. walking around, with the radiologist, you know, there's going to be, in, in clients up and down that, that environment, there's all kinds of different on-device intelligence applications that are going to be private to to that hospital environment and then other things you know uh, diagnosis yeah. that they you know that they can go and get you know up in the public cloud and it's going to be a, deli a smooth delivery of all of that maybe it's smaller models in the in the mm -hmm. you know uh, out at the edge maybe be able to bring big models um, like you know some of the inferencing servers we announced yesterday the 675 there's enough processing power in that to put you know a, a multi-billion parameter model all the way out at the very edge so that you're your real-time inferencing when you, where you need it. That's going to be a choice for what kind of workloads and what do you need. And making that decision, what should go here, what should go here, what should go here, is, is the, the key to successful implementation of hybrid. Makes sense. And there's a lot of you know, constraints right now. There's a lot of pressures. You know, enterprises may not be overly thinking some of the things that maybe Lenovo is about, you know, where do we get enough memory? Where do we get enough energy? But at the same time, they're seeing all these pressures. They're hearing all this. and it's, and their boards are saying, look, you need to do AI. I mean, that's kind of like what it is. Like the board comes into the room, CEO sits down, like, are you doing AI? Yeah. You're doing enough AI? Yeah. I mean, give me an AI. I want give, five AI. Uh, we need an AI. <laughs> we need all our stuff on AI. We need AI, you know. And, and so obviously that's a big pressure. Yeah. But then there's these smaller pressures. Can I get the equipment? Can we do it within a price? Can we drive ROI? Like, talk a little bit about that and how that's driving compute strategy. Because, um, mm -hmm. You know, I think you've probably heard me say it before. Like, I don't know that the board and the CEO are necessarily thinking, well, I need the, 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 the server to sit here or sit there. That's not what they're thinking about. But then okay. the, the pressure on the people underneath them is, hey, I need to do as much AI, get as much productivity, 
and spend as little as possible in that process. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think, you know, there was the initial, I completely agree with that, when there was the initial wave of, you know, oh, I, I need five or six AIs, and the CIO is trying to answer, well, that's, that's not a thing, you know, <laughs> he can't give you five or six AIs, what do you want to use it for? And I think, kind of similar, by the way, to, to how cloud services ramped, you know, in the beginning, there was this big rush, and then everybody kind of sat back and said, okay, we're not immediately seeing the ROI, the CFO start to get engaged going, hey, wait a minute, and then we start to focus on productivity. Right, which is you know back office first, and I think that a lot of the businesses that we've seen, a lot of the workloads that that are really using AI today uh, in a lot of our clients are back office stuff. So productivity used to take me four hours, now I can do it in one hour. Like you can measure that um, speed, throughput, productivity. That's where it has to start, um, and I think as 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 those metrics uh, start to increase, that's where and that will dictate you know, the productivity, the ROI of the, of the various workloads that you're doing, that's going to dictate where and what kind of AI should you have, right? If you can, if you can drive, hey, yeah, it used to take me four hours, now it takes me one hour, and that's all out of the cloud, great, because it doesn't really matter uh, per se. But if you're trying to do, you know, a thousand chatbot interactions an hour for your clients, and round tripping up to the cloud has got too much latency, there's just, there isn't, then, you know, you put that here to drive your thousand chatbots an hour, and you can measure the output uh, and the productivity uh, and the cost associated with a thousand yeah. chatbot interactions an hour. So if you can get down to that workload by workload, I think that's where you start to measure and measure the benefit. Yeah, historically, you know, we've always had compute in different areas, right? In fact, the first business machine was a cash register on the edge, mm -hmm. right? And then um, you know, mainframes, minis, and then client server. The challenge always became hey, I, I don't want to create a brand new layer of management nightmare uh, for me. And here we are. Like, I think we all agree that hybrid AI is the way to go. Uh, it doesn't really matter, matter where we're necessarily, you know, the board isn't asking where it is and the users don't care. It's about the experience and the outcome. So how, how are these different environments being managed uh, is it, you know, you know, we've seen, you know, people have um, a data fabric mm -hmm. that they can pull from, uh, agentic orchestrators that, that operate regardless of, of where the compute is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you seeing? How are they not adding more complexity? Well, I think um, that's where our services and our solutions come in. So I think there is being complexity added, and then there's nothing that's going to stop that. You know, AI is adding a layer of complexity where it's coming from. And, yeah. you know, as, as even mentioned on the stage, you know, you, you've got so many different organizations um, grabbing this, putting the subscription in. It's kind of the same thing as, as cloud in the early days where, you know, everybody was swiping their credit card, getting some, getting some cloud. And that's what we're <laughs> seeing now, right? Everybody's swiping their credit card and getting some AI. Um, and, you know, it's interesting because we, we, we talk to our clients about treat it in the same way. You know, it, it took us a couple of years as an industry to sort of realize that, Cloud ops is not IT ops. How you run your IT, it, you know, you need new processes, new people, new skills to run cloud. Same thing for AI, right? AI ops is not cloud ops or IT ops. So putting in place like a PMO model, putting in place uh, a broker, putting in place rules and compliance, people who know what they're doing, yeah. uh, partnering with a vendor that has expertise. You know, you might not have a ton of AI experts in your, you know, in your business or in the IT team. What well, we do, and we work with clients all around the world, and we see patterns of good behavior, bad behavior. So working with, uh, you know, with ourselves or, you know, any other vendor to put together a, you know, a, a PMO, put together a structure, put together a, a, um, a, a turning the lights off at night, put together compliance rules, who should you use, who should you not use. That's kind of step one mm -hmm. in, in getting control of that. And then you can start to make the proper centralized trade-offs for should this run here, mm -hmm. should it run here, and you can properly broker AI. So as we kind of pull this all together, Flynn, you know, you're talking to the enterprise. One of the great things about where you sit, and we talked about all the partners they had on stage, is the partners that you've worked with, these chip companies that are building these systems, they end up looking to a company like Lenovo, who deals with tens of thousands of enterprises around the world to deliver this stuff at scale. So if I'm a CIO, and you're talking to me right now, and they say, what do I need to do? Like, what's the big shift in my roadmap that I need to be thinking about right now if I'm going to be successful in delivering five AIs to my board, no, I'm kidding, but in delivering AI to the enterprise. Well, I think, um, I think step number one is to understand, going back to the previous theme, understand what do you want to do with it? 
Um, if you're a manufacturing company, you know, what do you want to do with it? If you're a retail company, what do you want to do with it? That's where you know, um, we offer a bevy of solutions, AI yeah. library. And you don't just go into the library and pick a book. You, know, you try to sit down, and, and we do this with our consultants as well. Mm -hmm. Let's workshop. You know, oh yeah, you want five AIs, great. What are they going to do? What yeah. do you want them to do? Do you want them to, you want to deliver agents to your marketing and sales team? Do you want to drive a computer vision solution to speed up your factory? Get down to, you know, what are the outcomes you want? Then we can back into, um, all right, you know, is your existing infrastructure, which probably isn't, is your existing infrastructure, can it handle what needs to happen? Do you have the data environment there? Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you have the compliance rules, gravity rules? Where do you want it to run? All of that comes after. What do you want to do with it? And that's where you know companies bring in forward, like Lenovo, a solutions library where you can sit through, look at you know we've got solutions for development, we've got solutions for content generation, we've got solutions for HR and legal. And as you look to those, that's where you start to clarify. Mm -hmm. All right, this is the outcomes that I'm looking for. Then you can back into you know do I have what I'm going to need, and how do I procure what I might need or get from the cloud? Well, Flynn, I want to thank you so much for joining us here. It's been a Great week, great event, and it's just getting started. Yeah, let's go. I have a feeling we're going to be doing this this again at some point, but we're going to get you know more experiential, more outcome based because yeah. I do think twenty six is going to be a big year for outcomes. Yeah. And I think all this work that's been done, it's like, hey, tell me how AI is delivering value to the enterprise. Maybe it's three AIs, maybe it's five, but all these AIs, how are we bringing success? That's going to be well. The, the AI inferencing wave is on its way. You know, which we're just beginning there, and when that comes, that's going to it's going to change how all businesses do it. And that's Huge wave of growth. I thought we were in a bubble, Daniel. It's not He's, a bubble. We're talking about growth here, not growth. Dot a dot bubble muscle <laughs> rocket ship. All right, everybody, thank you very much for being part of this six five. We are on the road here at Lenovo Tech World twenty twenty six. Subscribe, join us for all the great coverage and conversations here at Lenovo Tech World, and of course, all the great content on the six five. But for this episode, it's time to go. See you all later. We'll <laughs>